All right, update. Here we go for Thursday, January 17th. Another strong close in the market. We got a little pop intraday on some uh, news report that the U.S. was thinking about uh, reducing the tariffs on China, but then that was quickly denied. The market ran up 250 points, but it closed up 150. So a good close. S&P uh, solidly above 2,600, as I've been saying would happen. Now, in the data, and specifically I'm talking about the fiscal data, the fiscal flows, which is, that's the basis of all my analysis. There is some indication in there that the government shutdown is having a slowing effect. However, it is contained, okay? From the numbers I'm looking at, from what I see, does not appear to suggest it broadening out into uh, the general economy. It is contained. And we still have a very high level of fiscal support, spending $100 billion over last year. And you remember last year was a record for government spending. Um, now it's come down a little bit, and the rate of growth in that spending has slowed a little bit, but not enough to make any sort of a significant negative impact. It is still very, very supportive. So, uh, and also if, I, if, if you talk about the bank metrics, if you talk about uh, loans and leases, if you talk about bank assets, if you talk about bank residual or net worth, all of those things going higher, which indicates to me good credit demand, the economy is sound, and the stock market will ultimately follow the economy. That's the way it works. It's not the other way around. The stock market follows the economy. If the economy is doing well, corporate profits are going to go up, investors will react to that, stocks go higher. So things looking pretty good. Uh, but I am always, as, as I do, I monitor these things on a real-time basis. I'm the only one that does that. My numbers come in every single day and you know, when other economists are looking at data 30 days old, one quarter old, I have this stuff real time every single day. Remember, I have the only applied MMT approach that exists. There are a lot of MMT academics out there, a lot of MMT theorists who like to talk about it, the concepts. I have put together MMT and a trading approach uh, drawing from my 40 years as a trader and a member of four different exchanges, floor trader um, and money manager for a major international bank and a major hedge fund. So um, right now everything's looking pretty good. I sent out an email earlier today on oil. I think right now oil basically uh, treads water at these levels. You have very high product inventories. Uh, and that's negative. However, you have uh, crude inventory starting to come down. They peaked uh, around late November and crude oil exports are very strong. Crude oil imports are low. So these two conditions kind of balance each other out. You have some seasonal weakness in demand for gasoline, but that's going to pick up. Uh, what else? Interesting article that I saw today. Sam Zell, some of you might know who he is, he's a very savvy investor, made billions as a contrarian investor in real estate. Uh, he, his nickname was the Grave Dancer because he liked to come in and buy during crises and when things were very low. Sam Zell said he is buying gold for the first time in his life and he mentioned a number of interesting fundamentals which I have been talking about. Number one, the amount of investment that has been put into gold mining and exploration over the last five years is practically zero. Practically zero. I mean, this is not like the oil industry that put massive amounts of investment into fracking and new technologies. The mining industry has done nothing. And now what you're seeing with a number of high profile mergers, for example, the other day, and I spoke about this, you had um, Newmont buying Gold Corp last year, 
uh, you had, what was it, uh, there was another merger uh, with Rand Gold. Uh, so now you're starting to see that it is cheaper to acquire gold reserves through acquisition than actually mining for the stuff. So that tells you two things. Number one, there's going to be a lot of consolidation in the mining industry that's bullish for gold stocks and mining stocks in general. And number two, gold is becoming scarce. The price is going to reflect that. It's going to go higher. So I thought it was interesting that this guy, Sam Zell, is coming in and he said it's the first time in his life that he is buying gold. So there you have it. Uh, the dollar, not much going on today, but believe me, the trend is lower. Um, as far as the U.S.-China trade talks are concerned, I don't, I don't um, concern myself with that. Uh, we've had the tariffs on now for at least six months. The economy is in fine shape. We will see eventually a decoupling of the U.S. and China, just like we saw a decoupling of the U.S. and Japan back in the late 1980s and the 1990s. The U.S. has its own fundamentals. China has its own fundamentals. The markets will get through this. I don't react to all these headlines. Some headline comes out like today, everybody buys. Another day, a headline is negative. Everybody sells. It's ridiculous. Stay focused on the fundamentals. Stay focused on the long-term picture. If you want to get my stuff, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader or Zombie Trading. Uh, there was an email I sent out the other day with an option trade with the potential of over a 300% return by, by July, between now and July and a particular stock, a 330% return potential in a very low risk option trade. If you want that, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com, sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. That's it for now, everybody. Take care.